production. And Schreiber is one of the pioneers of Agile and signed the Agile Manifesto in 2001. He co-developed Scrum. He founded Scrum Alliance, Agile Alliance, and Scrum.org. And he continued to shape the way for the Agile community and the agility in, in our community. So he's going to be speaking to us today about the Agile Agility Pact. That was a very narrow definition. So I'm also um, married and a loving husband. I have two daughters. Um, I play the mandolin. Don't ever get me singing. Um, I'm a deck officer in the Marshall Marine. And yet I know when I die, it's going to be scrum. <laughs> you know. And, and if anyone ever asks you, you know, what is Scrum? There it is. You don't have to say a whole lot. I wanted to find out a little bit about you also. Um, how many of you are consultants or trainers? This is not exclusive. You could do many of these. Um, developers, developer meaning programmer, QA, um, design, architecture, that's good. Um, Scrum Masters Project Manager, that's good. good. Um, IT or Systems Manager, and Business Manager, excellent, good cross sections. Um, so we're going to talk a little about agility, big word. Um, Certainly good that in 2001 we chose that word rather than um, smelly or something like that. Um, it could have really helped things gain some momentum. Um, but would you raise your hand if your organization is agile right now? Good. Excellent. Becoming agile? Being told to be agile and will soon start. <laughs> Um, but Agile's not in your immediate horizon. You're still a comfortable person. <laughs> <laughs> this is a um, survey from the Economist, 2011, um, and it was looking at, um, this is again, they were interviewing C-level people, um, interesting power and position discussion from the get. And they were asking them, in your view, how important is agility to your organization's overall business success? And 40% of them said, is it extremely important? Is a core differentiator for us? 48% said, pretty important. We've heard the word. We're certainly going to do something about it. 10%, um, 2%, huh? 0% um, said, get out of my office. So, interesting. Now, agility um, is at an enterprise or an organizational level, personal, it's a little different. Um, it's its ability to take advantage of opportunities that come up, to respond to risks, and to do so in, in a meaningful way that allows you to control the risks that you might incur. That's a pretty tall order. So if I were um, Bethlehem, let's say J.P. Morgan, um, Apple, to be agile is, is really hard. That means agile in accounting, agile in sales, agile in order processing, accounting, again, um, software. It's a lot of stuff. And, and old habits accrue. They, they become the way you think and do. So for a whole organization to suddenly start shifting to become agile is a big deal. And I think I, yeah, pretty tall order. Um, John Cotter, uh, an expert at organizational change, uh, is quoted, said, actually said to me, most organizations that attempt to become something different, like Agile, um, Lean, um, TQM, it's a five to six year effort, and about 30% of them succeed because it's such a wrenching change in the way you think and the way you approach issues. Given um, a robust number of failures. Um, we're now starting to actually focus in organizations 
on agility just in areas where it is really important. It's driven by a specific business need. It's driven by something critical enough to, to justify the investment. So rather than trying to change all of the Apple, rather than trying to change all of, let's say, Credit Suisse, we look at the area that has the um, opportunity or the challenge in front of it, who actually needs to do something differently, and we work with them. Found it a lot more um, fulfilling, a lot more gratifying, a lot more successful, rather than trying to do everything at once. Turning to um, SAP's development organization, 16,000 people, and saying, you're going to be agile, is certainly an interesting conversation, 16,000 people. So I have a case study about um, an approach we're taking with agility with um, a company that really, really, really has to become agile quickly. And this company is in Germany, and it's a power company. Um, power companies aren't necessarily known for their agility. You know, they make energy, they ship energy, they collect money. Not a lot of agility. Um, and this company, had this situation occur to it. Great photos, and you may remember the earthquake that shifted Japan a little further to the west and changed Earth's axis a little bit. It created a phenomenal tsunami and wiped out a bunch of nuclear power plants and the air polarity is still problematic. So this occurred on March 11, 2011. On May 30th, 2011, Germany announced that they were going to close all their new business plans by 2022. I don't know if how many have taken trains to any parts of Europe, but nuclear plant, nuclear plant, nuclear plant, nuclear plant. Now you're starting to see windmills and um, solar grids also, but huge reliance on nuclear. And this was you know, a huge big deal. And eight nuclear plants were immediately shut down. Now, the company we're going to look at is named ENSWT for Southwestern Germany. That's an alias for it, so it could be anonymous, but that's a big power company. And the third largest electricity, electricity utility company in Germany, they serve 55 million customers. Some, you know, like EASF, huge um, petrochemical um, company. Some yourself in a you know, condominium. Um, the forced closure of two of its four nuclear plants in 2011 was not a good event. It caused its uh, revenues to drop 4.3 percent. It made it difficult for it to raise capital in the capital markets. Um, its stock dropped. So this was not a good event. Certainly, that would be one of the things for agility, where it says respond to challenges because they were also going to have to shut a whole bunch of more of their nuclear plants by 2015, and they were going to be losing another 40% of their nuclear, of their total power. This would not necessarily be a good thing for them, certainly not necessarily a good thing for um, you if you were trying to shave with an electric shaver at that moment, you got a brown up. A lot of issues about this. Probably a very good thing for Germany in the long term, um, rather than getting a nuclear uh, meltdown. And yes, amazing. I found out there are faults that cause earthquakes in Germany. I would have never guessed. I thought they were just in California. So this is their whole electric grid and it's got all sorts of stuff in it, but suddenly something's missing. The nuclear problem. And the question was, who is this company going to become? How are they going to satisfy their customers? How are they going to fulfill their obligations to those customers, to this part of Germany and German, uh, Germany as a whole, given these closures? And standing in one place and looking like um, a deer at the headlights of an approaching car was not one of the alternative answers. So they formulated two strategic moves. Now, formulating a strategic move is an excellent start. It shows someone's thinking. However, it doesn't change the company. It's a good start. And they decided that they would start partnering, always a good thing, and they would start looking more at wind, hydroelectric power, optimization of the generation fleet, and smaller gas um, power stations, 
all of these had certain issues, like all of the um, wind was in the North Sea. This is down southwestern Germany. The other thing was most of the gas was coming from Russia. Hmm. OK, so there's just an issue. Um, and the main focus of the things for development was they were going to start decentralizing the renewable. So even if you had renewable in your backyard, that'd be good. Um, smart grids, talk a little more about what a smart grid is. Cooperation with cities and municipalities. Hi, um, we're going to be shutting your power down a little bit this year. So you need some collaboration if you have to reduce power. And introduction to platform solutions so that they can start to some economies of scale. And these were their strategies, and they were all you know, very thoughtful. They were recognizing you can't just have an energy or a power grid. You have to have it be able to think, because your load on it's going to shift. And if you just take a normal grid, it turns out, like we experienced with the Northeast power outage some years ago, if your load drops, everything collapses, unless you have something expecting it and shifting the load around. Smart grid also implies that you can take certain organizations, people, whatever, and you can allocate them less power, more power based on time of day. Massachusetts, where I'm from, we tried that, and the first initiative um, was to let's cut the power to the poor people first. Huh. That one didn't go. Thank God. Um, so smart grid is a grid that can think, that can take power in various loads from many sources, distribute it intelligently. Um, very, very few places have that in, 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 in progress, in play. Um, probably if you're looking for a good stock to buy, good area. What they did is they started coming up with scenarios. There's a whole process called scenario planning that we work with them on. And this is where you lay out how the future might be. And what, what you see is likely scenarios that could be where you live in five, ten years. And once you lay out those scenarios, which in their case, which were, they could have adequate power from traditional sources, then they wouldn't need much of a smart grid just in case. Um, they could have adequate power supply, including new types of sources, but then they'd need a smart grid because of the fluctuations. Um, if they had inadequate power with the top one, um, the customers, they need smart grid with smart power distribution. And if they had inadequate power for their customers without smart grid or smart power, that was certainly a scenario. Um, it's called a going out of business and move to another country scenario. So they laid out these scenarios, and what you do then is you look at them and you say, what things are common amongst them that we already have in place? Which things are common amongst those which are more likely so we can start risk um, parlaying our risks and seeing what we can do to um, accommodate what's likely to happen. Then you also start looking for what are triggers that will indicate to us which one of these scenarios is becoming most likely. Now if you do this, then you can say, ah, we need this to accommodate our view in the future and we're going to be looking for all things. And they said, we really would like to, we'd like to have this adequate power supply, including smart grid homes, capabilities. So one, acquire and develop new energy sources. Smart grid technology, they would be put that in. And that's you know $10 billion type thing. It's not something by a radio shack. And the intelligent power distribution so that um, as power rose or fell, they'd be able to let people manage it intelligently. And that, of course, it implies a lot of political um, discussions with the various towns, various states. Um, so they agree with it. Now, their strategy required agility because they were not in a place where they could be what their strategy required. They decided that their, their main headquarters organization, um, making that agile was going to be very, very tough. So they founded another um, place, same city, Karls from Germany, a little away from the headquarters, and they called it the um, Energy um, Inc incorporated innovation campus. And this is where they were going to model the new things that they'd be doing, build the products, build the software for the products, test them in the market, and then implement them back into the main line um, energy business. Good approach. And the third thing is then implement those back into the main line business operation only in the areas 
which required the agility to change. So by this, they were trying to minimize the impact of um, change of becoming natural into small parts of the company. Now, at that point, they could have just said, okay, and this would be like many of you who get phone calls and someone says, hi, we want to become agile. Can you give us a training course? It's interesting, it makes you a little poorer, takes people out of your workforce for two days, but doesn't necessarily make you agile. It reminds me of when I went, when I stole the merchant marine, we came into Taiwan, and I'd always wanted a motorcycle. And I went to a motorcycle store, and I went, this is what I was buried in, and I said, do you have any $500 motorcycles? He said, oh, yes, 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 we have several, yours. So be careful how you ask for what you want. So they didn't want agility, they wanted the ability to make those things happen, to create them, and implant them into their organization so that they could fulfill that scenario. So just, I want to be agile is kind of a buzzword. It's meaningless if you don't know what it carries with it. They decided, um, oh, this just came out today. I shouldn't have read the New York Times. A switch to clean energy is challenging Germany. A audacious plan, you can read this. Um, they're finding out, my goodness, this is harder than simply stating we're going to get rid of our nuclear plants. I could have helped them back in 2011 by saying, this can hardly anything, but I wasn't called. So they're recognizing that this is difficult. So they're planned for the first six months in this part of Germany, which may well become a model for the rest of Germany, was going to only be done in the innovation campus and then any fruit from that was going to be implanted in the core business. So what they're going to do is first take a look at the developers and the managers who they've brought over to this innovation campus and assess their capability. If these guys, excuse me, when I say guys, I'm not intending to, it's just when I call it, say girls, it's really, the reaction's horrible. <laughs> so, they want to see if how whether these people could really crank out good sorts of products rapidly. So assess their skills and create a baseline that they could then measure against. And then based on the result, initiate some improvements in their capability, their ability to be agile and rapidly, iteratively, and incrementally create smart grid and smart distribution capabilities. Um, and then begin developing those products. And then as the products became available, take them and start implementing them into the main line of business. So probably, from our experience, a good idea would have been to engage in the business with that so you didn't come to their door and say, hi, we have something new for you. Be a good thing. So the first thing was to assess their current capabilities. One, what is their performance, both at an enterprise to whole energy company level and at an operational level within their innovation campuses development group? So how agile are you guys? Um, capabilities. What is their productivity? What's the quality of what they do? The value of what they can do? Are they focusing on just the most valuable things? Valuable things? And what's their process? And what are their skills in development, project management, and product management? This is pretty radically different. This is very, very different from teaching a product owner course than a scrum master course than five developer courses. This is first saying, where are you right now? What do you need? Because you have a short window in which you need these capabilities. What do we need to do to get these capabilities in place? And the first thing we did is we measured their agility index, which is just a dumb number. But it takes enterprise numbers, like customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction, and revenues per employee, very important numbers in balance, and operational numbers, like um, cycle time, amount of time it takes to stabilize the release of um, defects, and melds them into something which is a number from strange enough zero to 99.9 and thirty things up there. So you get a sense, not necessarily of how agile you are, but a number that reflects a meld of those numbers reflecting your agility right then. 
you can measure hopefully progress or a lot not from it. And it's true to accelerate across time as you become more agile at an operational level, you should see some pretty radical change in employee customer satisfaction as well as um, revenues per employee. So we looked at all of those metrics um, for to create a baseline. And not surprisingly, their installed version index was one, which is how many releases of the product you have out. As an energy company, one was just enough. So they did very well with that. If you were um, SAP, they have five or six, so they would not be so good. Another one was their revenue per employee. It was very high, not because of their profound skills, but because they were really skilled at buying gas, churning it to electricity, and pumping it out, and they made money hand over fist. By the way, when I used that phrase in Germany, it just didn't fly. <laughs> One of those quotes. The other areas were more problematic, needed improvement. Um, we look at their capabilities as an enterprise, its ability to change, to be agile. Um, their ability to focus on the most valuable things, their productivity in creating new things, their quality in the things they built, and their degree to which their process was added. So you see, see some areas where there's room for growth. And this is all good information for them. We also um, ran assessments on um, the various level of skills that we would need to start generating these smart security capabilities. And the dark blue is what they would need, we estimated as a starting point, and the light blue is what they had when they took the assessments. So what we found was um, the metrics needed improvement, significant improvement. We also found that their practices, they didn't have the practices in place to be agile, and they didn't have the knowledge um, that was required to do this sort of work. Now we could have spent a year you know, training, coaching, teaching. Um, instead, what they did is they turned to several of their trusted vendors and they brought in people who had done agile work with them in the past and been successful, and they put them with their people on a one-to-one -one partnering, mentoring basis. And they figured this way they would start getting what they needed at the same time, um, inculcating their people with the skills um, and the knowledge they needed. So that was a strategy, so let's see how it worked. First, their plan agility um, improvements that we figured they needed, we took from a list of practices that were needed, and we decided we would improve their standards, their development infrastructure, we had these contractors, we a lot of coaching, sort of fine done, and this helped them start understanding how to work in teams. And we did that for six months. We worked with them to become more agile, to start building the smart grid products, a lot of throwaway because they weren't really skilled at this yet, but less than you'd expect because we had this mentoring or one to one relationship. That was very good. And what we found after six months, and it's a good thing to measure after six months, I mean, you just can't say, oh, I hope by 2015 when we shut down the other nuclear plants we're agile and get smart grid. You really want to check in this kind of like monthly financials, except this sort of change doesn't happen that rapidly, so we chose a six-month part of it. And after six months, their agility had increased. They had developed some limited smart grid functionality. However, when they took that over to the mainline energy company, it was very difficult to get them to start using it because it was kind of like, hi, we have something called smart grid. Here it is. You're going to be doing your work differently when you work on lines. It's a, you need to involve those people. So our findings in agility, the plus side, um, the operational capability of the developers was much better. Um, the return on investment for what we were putting money in was excellent. Negative, their revenues had dropped some more. My goodness. Um, the employees were more dis less satisfied than before. Suddenly they realized that they were in for a massive change, and in most places when you say change, it means layoffs, disruption, unhappiness, and even in Germany it means that. Customers were less happy than before too, because they're like, you know, we could wake up in the morning, the lights wouldn't go on. 
wow, not a good day. So a lot of this could be anticipated, but we measured it. Hair gelling index went up a little. Um, probably not as much as I would hope to that degree of investment, but certainly an amount reflecting the difficulty of the problem that they were addressing. Hi, we're shutting down your plants. Oh, okay, over. this is hard work. The developer skills, when we assessed them, were very close to what was needed. That is, that people knew how to do um, test-driven development, they knew acceptance test-driven development, they knew the area of incremental. So their knowledge was much better at a number of levels, from developer through management, through product management. Enough so that we um, felt like we could start looking at pulling out some of the number of coaches, consultants, contractors that we had in place. We would still look and measure, but we could start reducing that cost. When we looked at the performance, it was improving. Our innovation rate, the ability to turn things around was better. Product cost ratio, better. Um, usage index, a little better, but it's actually the same. Um, customer satisfaction, they started feeling, oh, maybe these guys know what they're doing. I see a plan, so it's getting better. Customer satisfaction. So some things were starting to rebound. That was good. Um, their capabilities in terms of the enterprise, the value, productivity, and quality process were getting better. Still not much to write home about, but getting better. So they came up with, a, based on all this review at the next like, six months, they decided we're going to have another um, six months of effort along the same lines. Our business plan is we're going to take any work which we're told is low quality and scrap it. We're going to build on solid work that we have. We're going to continue developing highest value smart grid capabilities. And we're going to start working to include mainline business in all of the development and start working with them on the whole idea of change. Um, just having a place that develops new stuff isn't the same as creating organizational change. So they recognized and set up a um, senior level um, committee that was responsible for making more change absorb over the next six months. So what's interesting about this, and I, what I really enjoyed, is I wasn't just giving courses. I wasn't just coaching and consulting with bunches of other people. We actually had measures and saw improvement and saw areas where improvement wasn't happening and were able to take actionable decisions. So I was very pleased with, with feeling a little more certain we had just feels right. On plan agility improvements were um, helping them with change, communications, accountability, portfolio management, ordering the backlog, some of the value stuff and collaboration with the end customers. So these were things that we were going to work with the developers and the um, innovation campus people to learn. Um, after 12 months, so life is going well, it's now safe to fly into Germany, no problem. Um, smart grid was starting to emerge. So we were starting to see it in the marketplace. We were seeing them connect to local um, solar farms, we were starting to see them pull energy that would vary in, in, um, in, keep in voltage from the North Sea. We were seeing them able to handle ups and downs, and they were starting to talk with their customers about the ability to have smart grid capabilities on their homes, which would allow them to raise and lower it at their own choice. Um, so business change adoption was also happening, so business was able to make this a part of the way they did business. And um, we also found, and that was, goes back to that um, news clip the New York Times I showed you, we found that there are many, many uh, permissions and, and uh, community meetings and regulatory issues that we had to work on. Um, this was not a, oh, we're just going to do our business a little differently. Um, strangely enough, Germany sees this as the crux of how they do business. We shut down our electricity, we don't export. In fact, we don't eat, so critical. So what we're seeing is this slow absorption change there. And in agility finding, customer satisfaction went back up. Ha! Ah, we're not doing public business. Employee satisfaction, their investing in us. We're learning more. We're starting to be more capable. Um, return on investment went up, and revenues 
started rebounding above where they were before. And their, after one year, their agility index had gone up 10 points. It probably wasn't going to go up significantly anymore unless we recalculated. So more and more work might get up to 70. But their main benefit that they were hoping to accommodate was that their revenues and their customers wouldn't plummet because of their inability to support them. So more than that, we mostly measure positive things. In this case, what we should have also been measuring was the absence of the negative um, potential that could have happened if we weren't successful. So measured that way, this may have been 85, but in our way, it was 65. Performance, getting better across all grades. Um, capabilities, eh, some still needed to improve. At the enterprise level, their ability to change, we still rated it only 35% rather than what it could have been. The other levels, certainly nothing um, where you want to bring home a report card to your mother, but much, much better than before, and, and enough that they could actually start being a viable energy provider and setting a tone and stage for the rest of the German power companies in Germany. We were also able to start tracking, um, so we had a baseline review, another review, and the amount we're investing is a light blue, the cumulative investment is dark blue, so we're tracking the amount we're investing in just this agility initiative, and we're comparing it across time with the release frequency, um, which we're able to release things much more frequently, um, stabilization, if you might kind of make stuff work after you say code complete before you ship, that guy drops significantly. And cycle time, the ability to get a small piece of smart grid capability through the line, it got better too. So this is, they took this with the other metrics and we're starting to look at investment versus the capabilities that we're getting. And what they said was, we heard this agile stuff was, you know, kind of magical what we're really pleased is this is a business initiative and we can run it like a business initiative. We can manage this. And what struck me is over and over what I hear is how do we sell Scrum and the Agile to management? And I think the issue is not selling it to them, it's how do they manage this in a way that's meaningful to them and their accountability and with this, um, what we're seeing here in this energy company in Germany, they're not even seeing this as an agile, scrum, XP, whatever stuff. This is them solving a critical business problem in a regular management approach. Yeah, it's tough, but this is work. And, and that's when you start seeing um, the word scrum, XP, agile, all those things become not so um, in your face, but instead, oh, that's just the way we do business as we make things happen. And that's a delight because as long as we stay um, isolated with words of scrum and things like that, the business is going to view us as weird rather than something they can employ. So that business planning for the next um, six months is build more, improve business optimization, and start commercializing these smart grid capabilities from um, the power grid into the factories in each of your homes. I don't know if you've been looking at the newspapers, but a lot of companies in the United States have decided with solar dropping in price, and with so many landfills, they're starting to keep the methane gas in landfills, and they're running, Apple's running factories, BMW's running factories. Um, people are dropping off the grid left and right and reselling extra to the grid. So this is happening, you know, as we sit here um, talking about how important Scrum and Agile is, they're like, just watch our dust. Except we actually have something to provide and give to them. So every time we get, um, I mean, started an organization called Scrum.org four years ago, and I still get those, those very awkward calls where someone says, hey, we want to go Agile. Oh, I'd like a training course. Um, can you consult with us and help us do better? Whenever we do that now, we provide them what I like to think of as a sandwich. Just me. And, and it's, it's exactly what they asked for. You know, this, training, consulting, whatever. But before we start at a relatively low cost, we measure where they are. 
What's your agility index? What are your capabilities? Training. Then three months later, okay, what was the impact of that effort, consulting, coaching, training, so that they can measure what their return on investment is, whether they got better, whether it actually had a benefit. And with this, management can now manage um, the implementation of getting the benefits of Agile, Scrum, we still like XP, all those good words that we love. So it's kind of like seeing our children grow up and join the adult world. It's one way of thinking. This is a quote from um, Forrester Research, did a study on agility and metrics. And um, Diego Lequitis was saying, tomorrow's great applications development and delivery needs will be those who focus on delivering constant value and incremental improvement. Traditionally, leaders have been managing on the basis of cost, scope, and effort, but these basic measures aren't useful in an actual context. Useful in a systems context, but from a business using systems development to be more valuable, more productive, more agile, um, I think what we looked at before was an approach that has been successful. I'm sure it has weaknesses and flaws and all that, like everything that I do this. But um, it works so far. I put that there to remind myself. Do you have any questions about what we just talked about? Ideas, thoughts? <coughs> yes? It's interesting when I hear you talk about John Carter and five to six years and 30% success rate, and most of what I see is around the commercial world, you know, that um, for competition in the market and be more agile in the marketplace. Right. I come from Washington, D.C. So Hi. in addition to that 30%, I'm working with large federal, federal agencies, yep. and I'm in the business intelligence and data warehousing. So I figure I have better odds in the merchant marines in the field. So I'm wondering what you're seeing um, with, with federal government or with, with public sector in making progress or with me either measuring maturity or, or any kind of success. Because they're, they're throwing the word agile into every outfit I know. out, and agile equals scrum in their mind. What Congress said, all projects have to be agile. Um, DOD said something similar. Um, all that does is get everyone to say we're agile. Have you seen, have you seen, We've seen some profound successes. The FBI, they have success. That was in the um, um, Inspector General reports about three years ago. How they delivered something very rapidly for much lower cost. Um, we've seen some good things in the CIA, we've seen some good things in the FBI, fight of the future, um, good things. Um, unfortunately, um, we've also seen a lot of hiring by Lockheed Martin and other companies, by anyone who can spell Agile, and they reformulated everything into Agile, and they say more Agile. Um, we've also worked with companies like Avanade, which has 17,000 people, and they're actually going through methodical effort to become agile using an approach very similar to this. So I think what's going to start happening is we're going to see the dividing line between those who can actually help save money, particularly if you don't get the budget approved, and those which continue to cost money without providing value. But if it's a slow uphill climb in the commercial marketplace, it's going to be much slower in government. However, when you're successful, it really shines. I've been, I've been successful in pockets, yeah. but not anywhere near an enterprise level. It's a CFO office that wants to. How many of you have been successful at more than pockets? It's tough. This, this is a way of them becoming successful in more than pockets, but it's just it's a real challenge because, like you said, change. So if I, if I follow correctly. Uh, Can you hear him? So if I follow correctly. So if I follow correctly, uh, after six months, I think some of the metrics actually went down. Yes. Uh, so what do you really do, or how do you help the organization stay focused and not just give up on the whole agile? So what are some of the things that you can encourage or do? Um, actually, it's not my problem. <laughs> it's their business. 
that says, wow, you put a set of stats and went down seven points. Are we surprised? And so we started to watch, you know, about John Cotter's things about going on the clock and listening to rumors. We started unearthing why they were so scared. The customer satisfaction down, we could just read the newspapers and see why they were worried. Um, so it's just, again, information that they could do something with. Just because you stop listening to information doesn't make it go away. So it's more around the facilitation aspect. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and a company that has an issue of like uh, this energy company doesn't need a lot of facilitation once they start burning away at the engine this number. They're good at the numbers already. Yes? Um, so Thank you. Two questions. Uh-oh. Uh, Does he have more than one? <laughs> I didn't get my hand in twice. Okay. Uh, the agility index. Yes. Uh, is there a formula? Yes. To compute the agility index yes. that we can use on a day-to-day -day basis? No. Second, second question. <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain why first. Um, metrics, operational metrics, we can change maybe on a monthly basis to be better operationally. Enterprise metrics usually change their live indicators on a three to six month basis. So it's like if you study them too closely, you'll go blind and won't get much benefit. Operational. Operational, of course. And many of them have been published already. Right. Second question then. Um, I work for a company that does custom software development uh, for uh, education. Okay. Uh, customers are, are government, and they are used to fixed price, fixed duration contracts. How do I do agile with fixed price, fixed duration, and make money on it, and, and still, and is it just a fear of agility I'm putting on a, a, a you know, waterfall project? How do I do this? I'm asking this around, like, looking for I would, I would ask that in open space. There are many people who have succeeded with that. However, um, there's an old saying which applies to it which is don't try to teach a big to think. It can't, you know, just annoy it. So you need to find someone who's interested in getting better value, um, better things. If they just want something which is secure as in past, ask it's an open space. Okay. Turns out that the same was wrong. Things can't think. Oh, oh wait a second. Hold on. Um, uh, given the example that you have, I'm curious to know what sort of length of time their strategic thinking was, um, because you talked about six months, 12 months, etc. Yep. So I'm curious to know of what, how long their strategic thinking was and at what point they were starting to review their strategic thinking. Okay, the company is DMDW, Energy Company of baden württemberg which you know, Krebs is from, so that's interesting. Um, they have a 2020 strategic plan and they have a set of management driven by COO and board directors running this strategic plan. And this is, this is not just will our company succeed or fail, this is what are we going to do for Germany or not. So they are dead serious in the way that only Germans can do. Not nearly as lively as the French. <laughs> How are we doing on time? Can I ask my? Yes. I just wanted to make sure. Yes, sure. Thanks, Dan. Uh, you see, like, you know, employee satisfaction went down. I think it's quite a common problem in enterprise wide. Like, you know, people these days, the restructuring in enterprise is like very frequent. We want within six months sometimes. Yeah. And that impact your contents, like your scrum master got changed, your product, product owner got changed, or your team members got changed. How do you manage what's the right way to manage that? And, like, you know, how the job can be successful with teams changing? Open space. Did you think you, you know that the reality is people, they have to see things getting better. They have to have hope. And they have to feel like that both at a organizational, societal, and a personal level that this is the right thing to do. If you don't engage that, and it takes a while for them to trust that this is good. I mean, in our corporations that laid off millions of people saying trust us is no longer valid. They have to see it operate. And then you start seeing the place that go back up. Thank you, Ken, for thinking about that as a project. You're welcome. Sherry, just had, what do we have to think about as we start <coughs> organizations into a jelly so Thank you so much. You're welcome.
short words, I want to thank all of you because, as you know, you're doing the work. You're out causing things to happen differently. You're causing things to get better. Um, so you're really doing the hard work, and I really appreciate it. Without you, you know, this is going nowhere. Thank you.